always happy to come to the Gulf Islands uh, territory because of the richness of the territory, of the Sawada people, the Sotlapan speaking people. We are so very proud to have been a part of events here. The, the welcome and blessing for an event is really um, around safety and um, bringing people together in a caring way. We ask our Creator to be with us as we come together with uh, tough questions and that our dialogues together will not uh, be hurtful to anyone, that we will actually be touched mind, body and soul by the words that are shared today. Any opportunity to gather and share stories and connect and network and uh, I think is just so critical. I'm seeing a lot of excitement around coming together as a community, coming together and seeing the commonalities of the challenges and opportunities that the different islands have. The one universal thing that pops up again and again and again when we see a remote community that's turned around economic and demographic stagnation into growth, appropriate place, appropriate growth is exactly what you just said. That you have to first of all identify at least the one thing that makes your island, your community unique. And it's not enough just to say, look at this, this is beautiful. British Columbia has a lot of beautiful communities. It has to be something more, something in here. It can be something quirky, but it has to be something unique. And then tell a big, brash, compelling story and use new and emerging social media to do it. So what are unique or key differentiators uh, between the islands? Um, I used an example of, of uh, Cumberland who, who really rebuilt uh, their town and community based on mountain biking. You know, that's a big cultural thing and, and, and their uh, average age now is like 37, which, which really defies the odds uh, for most of our communities who are averaging up in age quite, quite quickly. It's not just about bringing in a new young demographic. It's also about retaining the youth that are growing up on the islands and presenting opportunities for them to stay. We actually have a vehicle in Canada. We've had it since 1973 called a Mortgage Investment Corporation. And so what I realized is we don't have to change anything. We can just apply this model for uh, the people that have extra money to put money into it that then can be redistributed into mortgages for people providing essential services in the community. Uh, skilled tradespeople um, is the big one, and then as well as education, public safety, so in this case it would be the volunteer firefighters, as well as the uh, healthcare workers, so people that you really need in your community that also volunteer a lot, and as well as young families. We're not looking to do developments, that's just one option. We're actually looking to issue mortgages, so part of what makes this interesting is there's so much work around developing housing, and I mean, that's certainly, I think, the federal government, you know, billions of dollars into developing. And what I'm saying is, why are we doing that? Why are we just issuing mortgages? Let the market be the market. And all we're doing is saying to the person, you go out and find the place you want to buy. Here's your mortgage. So it's a very quick way to get people into housing, um, as well as doing development. There's just universal themes running through the conversation. And one, as people think about how do they build um, an innovative and, and vibrant ecosystem for entrepreneurial activity, is the first step is really asking questions, is convening the community. So it's not about having a really detailed, refined plan that you go and spend loads of money in launching. It's around trying out different events and seeing who's coming to the table, what are the issues or the questions or the needs being raised. Um, and then that's when you start developing more of a bus plan. Don't be shy to pull people off island or like say in Victoria or Comox or somewhere else because it will provide inspiration for the companies that are local and it also causes everybody to step up their game a little bit. There's an increasing number of people that are, are now able uh, and successfully working remotely. So you want to lever the strengths <laughs> and, and, and deal with core infrastructure and that is a bit of a magic formula mm -hmm. because what won't happen is the development that we're seeking when we don't have that core infrastructure vis-a-vis uh, conductivity. 
we all know that tourism is one of the biggest growing industries and so certainly for most islands I would say actually tourism seems to be one of the biggest uh, things that is pushing economic development. We have a love-hate relationship with it and that is we need it but we aren't terribly enamoured by the amount of people that tourism brings in and so we have to figure out how we can do tourism sustainably. Uh, what tools exist to begin to uh, actually succeed in shoulder and off-season and what some of the prerequisites might be in order to actually deliver shoulder and off-season experiences. When we're evaluating applications, if you are taking um, your festival event and putting it into shoulder seasons or off-seasons to encourage that uh, visitation in that time, that gets extra points in the um, application. So there's a couple, couple of ways that, that we're doing that. I think the theme I heard very much today is that it's busy that uh, the ferry system is busy, it's overloading a lot, uh, people are finding it difficult to travel. They're worried about their connectivity, their ability to get to and from other centers, their ability to run their lives, their ability to conduct their businesses. And, and what can the ferry company do to, to help improve that? We fully support the diversion of vehicles off the ferries. That is one way to get, uh, to get more capacity available. In other words, we, we may not be able to build our way out of these overloads. I mean, if we put a 300-car ferry going to Bowen Island, eventually even that will be full. And in the meantime, you won't like it when 300 cars come through Snug Cove in one shot. You're not going to like what that does to Snug Cove. And the island isn't the same island anymore. Our ships are running at about, you know, 20% capacity on passenger count. There's only one or two days a year where you ever hit passenger count on one or two routes. Very low average annual utilization on, on foot passenger capacity. So the trick is, as, as you have pointed out very, very well, is, is to say you've got to get, you got to target the people who would have taken their car on that ferry and give them an alternative which is as attractive or hopefully more attractive. Despite the fact that I was on the program committee and, and one of the organizers of this event, I did not anticipate the talent that would be in the room, the engagement, in my professional association, I've never been to a conference as relevant as the two days that I've had here where I've got provincial counterparts and colleagues and elected officials that uh, you know I work with and I've got deeper relationships and so much effective networking has happened. And this woman, Colleen McCormick, mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> is amazing, we'll be following up for sure, about carbon offsets and how they can be used for conservation financing and uh, dealing with the like the three crises on the planet: the biodiversity crisis, the climate change crisis, and the inequality crisis. One initiative can inspire much more. That was uh, my personal big takeaway. Also, go Shrek. Really cool. I feel like I'm going away from the forum with real tools and real answers and like very helpful resources. And in the discussion, it was so interesting to hear from people from all different islands, including Hornby, Denman, as well as here, Pender Island, um, how they can bring in those principles into how they do business. You know, in terms of circular economy, how they can make reuse of waste or what people consider waste, and how they can extract further value from that, and therefore supporting economic development in the long term. It's been an amazing experience to represent the islands and the, the beautiful people and the beautiful cultures and communities of the Southern Gulf Islands. And there's a reason why people come to the islands every year. They're drawn to these places because they're incredible communities. And this is a noble work that we have in order to create resilient, sustainable economies, year-round economies that can support the people that live here and as well to create places for people to be. It's gonna be very interesting to see what action takes place from this and uh, I think that people are going to go away feeling really like this is a really fine event for them to take the time to travel here and to experience connecting and uh, being able to really say that I made a difference today by being here with these people.